is Melissa Zad for Into Boxing. And I am so delighted to be joined by Sky Nicholson. Sky, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh my God, it's such a pleasure. Mm-hmm. Like, your coach, Eddie Lamb, has been just so accommodating. He's like the nicest guy. He honestly is. He's, um, I'm very lucky. He's, well, apart from when we're training, he's very nice. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's really helped put this together. And it's a real great moment for me because I'm a huge advocate for female boxers, boxing in general, obviously. But uh, you're a very particular talent and I absolutely love watching you do the business. Um, so we've just finished watching Sky, well, I've just finished watching Sky mm-hmm. do eight rounds um, of beautiful boxing. How did you find that? Thank you. Um, no, it's, it's been really good. I've had great sparring this camp. Um, we're coming into the last couple of weeks of sparring now. And um, no, I'm really, really excited. I feel like we've added so much to my game. Uh, and yeah, I, I just can't wait to, to yeah, show the world what I can do. It's really exciting, actually, because you're going to be doing that in Australia, where you're from. Um, how much does that mean to you, kind of going back to your country and showcasing your talent there? Yeah, I can't wait. Um, I've got very, very loyal supporters back home who have been waiting for this, um, my pro debut in Australia, really. Uh, So, no, the homecoming. I'm very excited. Uh, I've got great fans coming to watch from all over Australia. And, um, yeah, I just can't wait to put on a show for the fans and and, um, hopefully a a really exciting, impressive win. I'm sure it will be, to be honest. Um, But do you feel that kind of, like, being an Olympian and having built that profile through the Olympics and now having had you know some fights as a pro has helped you build your fan base in Australia. Yeah, definitely. I, I think we're, we're building my fan base around the world, which was um, always the plan when I signed with Eddie and Matt Troom. Um, I didn't just want to be a star in Australia. We want to be a, a, a name worldwide. We want to be a driving force in women's boxing. And um, that's why I'm boxing around the world. That's why I'm boxing in the UK, the US, and now um, finally back home as well. So, no, I, I've got great fans in Australia, but I've also got um, a great fan base building in the UK and the US as well. Do you know what? That actually works so nicely with the kind of like disown mentality of being very global, uh, which is why the matchroom link up with Sky Nicholson is a, a really smart one. I know, it was a match made in heaven, really. Yeah. Um, we, we definitely shared that vision, um, that global kind of icon. That's the goal. Um, I don't just want to be a household name in Australia, but um, worldwide. And how's it been working with Eddie? He's obviously such a personality within boxing, but actually in terms of, you know, his professionalism, his work ethic, it's unmatched. Um, how have you found it? Do you mean Eddie Lamb? Because there's so many Eddies. I'm sorry, I meant Eddie Hearn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, Eddie Hearn's been amazing. Um, He's been extremely supportive. He's um, delivered on everything that um, we agreed on and discussed right from the the start, the early stages. And um, no, I couldn't be more happy with Matchroom. I have absolutely no regrets and um, I can't wait for uh, what the future holds. That's really exciting. And, uh, you know, just to chip in with, how do you find working with Eddie Lamb? Because, you know, he's also just like an incredible coach. He's his reputation precedes him, like, and he's such a lovely guy to be around and so knowledgeable. Um, how have you found that transition with him? It's been so good. Honestly, we clicked right from our first session together um, and I just knew uh, that's where I needed to be for my boxing. Um, we're constantly learning and adapting and um, changing things together. Um, we, we're watching different fighters. We're kind of guiding a bit of a roadmap of, of where we see my career going and um, no I'm really lucky I've got a really really good team around me um, Paul Reddy my manager from STN Sports as well um, with him Eddie and Eddie uh, now I've got a really really good team that I really trust and uh, yeah I, I can't yeah I can't be more blessed I'm very very lucky a team full of Eddies yeah. I love that <laughs> a team full of Eddies and Pauls Paul Taylor in the corner as well um, Eddie's right-hand man, so now we've got um, Paul Reddy from STN, my nutritionist, Paul O'Neill. Oh, wow. um, yeah, the Pauls and Eddie's everywhere. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, so in terms of the fact that you're obviously spending a lot of time in the UK training, um, how has that been? Because it's you know culturally different, the weather's different. How has that adjustment been for you? It's been really good. Um, obviously, it helps having such a good team around me. Um, I've definitely built like a, a home away from home here. Um, I've got a really good community in the gym as well. I've got um, 
great talent that I'm training with in the gym. Um, the boys are awesome and they're all very supportive of me. Um, they basically, I'm like a little sister to all of them in the gym, even though I'm older than probably most of them now. <laughs> um, but I look younger, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. No, um, it is, it, it's, it can be challenging. Like I've, I've packed up my life, moved to the other side of the world, but um, I feel like I've got a home here as well now. Um, the UK's kind of adopted me. Um, I'm actually a dual citizen now, so. Um, Welcome. Yeah, you can both claim me, it's fine. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's uh, I miss home and I miss my family. I obviously miss the weather um, from back home, but I, I know I'm exactly where I need to be. Um, I'm on this path that I feel like um, was already written for me and um, just living my destiny. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Um, so obviously, you know, you've mentioned your family and missing them, but how, how do they feel about you being over here? Are they like, you know, as excited as you are? Are they supportive or do they kind of, are they kind of like, Sky, come on, come back home, visit us more often? Yeah. They, um, they are very supportive and they understand. Um, they know why I'm here. Mm. Uh, they know that I'm doing everything that I can to be the best boxer that I can be and, um, and really make sure that my career, I, I take every opportunity I can. So they understand, but they do miss me. They, um, they do call and, and say, you know, you still live here, right? Like this is still home yeah. and, and remind me sometimes. But um, they're obviously very glad that I'm happy here as well because um, you don't really want to be having to, to make all these big moves and, and change of lifestyle and, and not enjoy it. So um, no, they're, they're very supportive. They're very excited for me to come home and um, yeah, they're, they're getting their head around the fact that I kind of live here now. <laughs> I'm sure it's really, really difficult. Um, but obviously in terms of your fight coming up, are you planning to spend a little bit of time in Australia after the fight? Um, at the moment, a few days. Oh. Uh, the plan is to definitely go home for Christmas and have a good break over Christmas. But I do want to try and have two or three fights in the second half of the year. And obviously with this fight being pushed back to mid-October, it was originally set for September. Um, it doesn't give me a lot of time, so I would like to get straight back into the gym. Mm. Um, but obviously just focusing on this fight right now. There's nothing locked in after this fight, but uh, if things go to plan in this fight, I would um, ideally like to see myself back out again um, in a quick turnaround like I did in the first four fights. Mm. So um, I would like to get back in the gym and stay ready uh, if an opportunity arises to, to get back out mm. quickly, yeah. So what's the plan for 2023? Because obviously you've got a good few fights under your belt, planning to have another one, aside from the one that's already scheduled <laughs> in. Um, are we thinking titles in 2023? I should hope so. Looking at, you know, being blessed enough to see your sparring, like I would say that that's the direction you're definitely heading in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, titles definitely... Um, obviously this next fight's the Commonwealth title. We'll definitely look at some international titles um, to try and grab probably before the end of this year, hopefully, and then looking at those world title fights um, early next year. I'd like to, I would really like to fight for my first world title um, in March if I can, um, just to like kind of say that I did it in my first year as a pro, because obviously I debuted in March. So if I could do it in 12 months, I'd... Um, I'd love to kind of tick that box, but it'll depend. Um, we're taking it fight by fight. We're not going to rush into anything. Um, we're going at the right pace, making sure that we fight all different styles and, and get that experience and those rounds in as well. But um, no, very, very exciting times coming. So in terms of obviously, you know, the kind of experience you picked up as a pro already compared to your vast experience as an amateur, mm -hmm. what are some of the key things that are different in the two, two different segments of the sport? Um, I think obviously we're doing more rounds, but it's, uh, I guess you could say a faster pace as well, going from the three minute rounds back to two minute rounds. Um, I think for me, the biggest change has been just kind of learning to um, ground myself, like stand my feet, um, plant my feet and um, load up a bit more on shots um, rather than just looking to point score all the time. So that's something we've worked on massively uh, since coming back after those first four fights. Um, and something that I really hope to showcase in my next fight that I can stand and fight and be entertaining and exciting in other ways as well. Like obviously um, my boxing and my footwork and my movement um, has been my main strength for a long time and we definitely want to keep that. We're not trying to get rid of anything but we just want to add and, and show different, um, I guess, sides to what I can do and um, show that I'm a, an all-round fighter and not just a, a, a particular style. 
I think that's a really, it's really important to have loads of tools in your arsenal, obviously. Um, but in terms of your, <clears throat> your natural style, which is, you know, you're quite a counter puncher. Your time is, timing is exceptional. Very, very awkward as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, so hard to read your rhythm, which is like where so much of your success lies. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very interesting to me because Australian fighters are usually quite come forward. Yeah. And you're on the back foot, very effectively on the back foot. Mm -hmm. uh, where did that style develop? I think a lot of it really came quite naturally. Mm. Um, my brother, who passed away before I was born, so I never met him, uh, he was a Olympian, Commonwealth Games, world medalist, um, pro fighter as well. Wow. He, he unfortunately died when he was 22, so he was very young in a car accident. Um, but he was a Southpaw, awkward counter fighter and um, very, very similar style to me, very hard to hit. And I never even watched him box. I didn't see footage of him box till I was about 18. I'd already been boxing six years. And in that six years, I was just always hearing, oh my God, she's so much like Jamie. She wow. boxes just like Jamie. It's just like watching Jamie box. And to actually see it with my own eyes when I saw it, I was like, it was like watching myself. Yeah. He was a bit better. <laughs> but I was just like, oh my God, I see it. But it must just be this natural thing because it, it's both of our styles, it wasn't really something you can teach. Mm -hmm. It was um, so much natural instinct with the check hook and um, just that evasive style and that timing. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite weird, really. But yeah, I don't, I don't know where it came from. Um, it was kind of just in me when I started boxing. But um, we've definitely developed my style a lot. I think I'm um, a much more well-rounded fighter now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's only going to improve as I become more experienced in the pro game as well that is so weird like yeah. <laughs> listening to that gave me goosebumps it's mm -hmm. it's uh yeah it must be like a dna thing or like hereditary i don't know <laughs> um but do you feel that you know going back to your brother's passing which i'm really sorry to hear about mm -hmm. but do you feel that his passing and the influence that might have had on on your life in terms of him being a boxer kind of paved the way for you i think definitely he's obviously always been um a big role model to me mm -hmm. so i grew up hearing about um, his boxing journey and all of the amazing things he did. And, yeah, so I grew up thinking, wow, like, my brother was this, like, star. He was one of the best boxers to ever come out of Australia. So I, I definitely had um, a great role model in him. And I feel like um, me following in his footsteps and, and going and achieving what I've achieved, I think... Um, was a lot for my family. Um, it made my parents very proud, obviously, and um, it kind of gave Jamie and I a relationship um, through boxing that we obviously never would have had because we never met. So um, I feel like I know him and I think I've always felt like this comfort um, on my whole boxing journey. Everything I've gone and done, he had already done and I feel like I had that kind of comfort and um, I think he's always there with me in every single fight. That is so beautiful, honestly. Yeah. Um, obviously you've mentioned that you're like a huge advocate for female sport, um, female boxing in particular, you know, women, we go through different pressures just in life in general and particularly in the boxing industry, um, you know, <clears throat> they're under, you know, a lot of different gays than, than men are. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that kind of stand out to you in, in that, in that landscape? Yeah, look, um, I think women in general, in today's society live with so much pressure around um, like body image and weight, what we look like, what we're posting on Instagram, what our lifestyle's like. So obviously um, being professional athletes, um, we're extra under the microscope. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's just, I think the women need to support each other. Um, like we're seeing so much of this body shaming and stuff on social media and it's just like how can you be posting and tweeting about anti-bullying in one tweet and then posting a picture of um, another female fighter and body shaming her and talking about her weight or her, her body image it's like we are under enough pressure and stress as it is like um, making weight and all of the stuff that comes with that and being under that microscope like why nitpick and make it worse for the girls like you you're in it you know what it's like so how can you go and do it to someone else and then post about anti-bullying yeah. <laughs> it's so frustrating but um that's something I would like to see change I think 
Um, there are some really great women in boxing who are very supportive and it's all about women supporting women. And um, But, yeah, there's there's a few out there that are just kind of missing the point there a little bit, I think. But, um, yeah, I guess that's the world we live in, isn't it? And if you had a message to um, those kinds of... I, I don't want to say trolls because that sounds <laughs> rude. <laughs> but, like, if you had a message for people who are missing the point mm-hmm. and and kind of like skimming past what's important what would that message be i think if you're focusing on what somebody else looks like to the point where you need to post about it i think you need to look in the mirror and focus on yourself focus on your boxing um, focus on what you're doing and um let everyone else worry about themselves that would be my message <laughs> so stay in your lane stay in your lane <laughs> stay in your lane yes exactly yeah, I say that. <laughs> um, yeah it's super important people tend to veer out of their lanes mm-hmm. um and i guess you know social media provides a comfort in that they think that they can do that and there's no consequences but you know the way it's impacting someone's mental health or their image it's it, that's a huge consequence yeah definitely and um i feel like so much mental health and um, eating disorders and everything can come from making weight in boxing. And um, yeah, it's the last thing you really need. I understand building a fight, getting people excited about a fight, but body shaming, um, talking about mental health issues, um, yeah, stuff like that. It's just like there's better ways to, to build a fight. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, save it for the ring. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, so, Sky. Really, really, really excited to see you back in action. Um, what time can UK fans catch you um, on DAZN? I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Um, I feel like this has been the longest camp, um, but we're nearly there now. Um, the fight's in Brisbane, Australia, so I think we're about nine hours ahead of the UK, and I am hoping to be boxing around 9 p.m. So around midday on Saturday, the 15th of October. It's a big boxing day already. Um, the women's card that was supposed to be a couple of weeks ago, um, will be on that night, but I'll be opening the show on DAZN um, midday uh, around the world. But yeah, midday in the UK, um, Saturday 15th of October, tune in. It's a huge day for women's boxing, starting with your (laughs) Commonwealth title fight and then moving on to obviously the long-awaited Savannah uh, Marshall Clarissa Shields fight. So, so, so excited to see you in action and thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, guys. 